Section 4 of The Adventures of Bobby Coon by Thornton W. Burgess. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jude Summers. Section 4 Bobby Longs for the Green Forest and The Happiest Coon Ever. Chapter 10 Bobby Longs for the Green Forest. Now, though Bobby Coon was made a great deal of by Farmer Brown's boy, and was petted and stuffed with good things to eat until it was a wonder he wasn't made sick, he was really a prisoner. Excepting when Farmer Brown's boy played with him in the house, he was fastened by a long chain. You see, when at last the bandage was taken off and the leg was found to have healed, Bobby was kept a prisoner that he might get the full use of that leg once more before having to shift for himself. Day by day, the strength came back to that leg, until it was as good as ever it had been, and still Bobby was kept a prisoner. The truth is, Farmer Brown's boy had grown so fond of Bobby that he couldn't bear to think of parting with him. At first, Bobby hadn't minded in the least. It was fine to have all the good things to eat he wanted without the trouble of hunting for them, things he never had had before and never could have in the green forest. It was fine to have a warm, comfortable bed and not a thing in the world to worry about. So for a time, Bobby was quite content to be a prisoner. He didn't mind that chain at all, excepting when he wanted to poke his inquisitive little nose into something he couldn't reach. But as sweet Mistress Spring awakened those who had slept the long winter away, the trees and flowers and insects, and old Mr. Toad, and Johnny Chuck, and Striped Chipmunk, and all the rest. And as one after another the birds arrived from the sunny Southland, and Bobby heard them singing and twittering, and watched them flying about, a great longing for the green forest crept into his heart. At first he didn't really know what it was that he wanted. It simply made him uneasy. He couldn't keep still. He walked back and forth, back and forth, at the length of his chain. He began to lose his appetite. Then one day Farmer Brown's boy brought him a fish for his dinner, and all in a flash Bobby knew what it was he wanted. He wanted to go back to the green forest. He wanted to fish for himself in the Laughing Brook. He wanted to climb trees. He wanted to visit his old neighbors and see what they were doing. He wanted to hunt for bugs under old logs and around old stumps. He wanted to hunt for nests being built, so that later he might steal the eggs from them. Yes, he did just this, I am sorry to say. Bobby is very fond of eggs, and he considers that he has a perfect right to them if he is smart enough to find them. He wanted to be free free to do what he pleased, when he pleased, and how he pleased. He wanted to go back home to the green forest. Farmer Brown's boy has been very good to me, and I believe he would let me go if only I could tell him what I want, thought Bobby. But I can't make him understand what I say any more than I can understand what he says. What a great pity it is that we don't all speak the same language. Then we could all understand each other, and I don't believe we little folks of the green forest and the green meadows would be hunted so much by these men creatures. There's nothing like common speech to make folks understand one another. I know Farmer Brown's boy would let me go if only he knew. I know he would. Bobby sat down where he could look over towards the green forest and sighed and sighed and all the longing of his heart crept into his eyes. Chapter 11 The Happiest Coon Ever As jolly Mr. Sun smiles down and makes the land all bright and fair, so happiness within the heart spreads joy and gladness everywhere. Now though Bobby Coon couldn't speak the language of Farmer Brown's boy, and so tell him how he longed to be free and go back to the green forest, he could and he did tell him in another way just what was in his heart. He told him with his eyes, though he didn't know it. You know, eyes are sometimes called the windows of the soul. 
This means simply that as you look out through your eyes and see all that is going on about you, so others may sometimes look right in your eyes and see what is going on within your mind. Eyes are wonderful things, and a great deal may be learned from them. Eyes will tell the truth when a tongue is busy telling a wrong story. I guess you know how hard it is when you have done wrong to look mother straight in the face and try to make her believe that you haven't done wrong. This is because your eyes are truthful. Looking straight into the eyes of fierce wild animals often will fill them with fear. Trainers of lions and other dangerous animals know this and do it a great deal. Fear will show in the eyes when it shows nowhere else. It is the same with happiness and contentment. So it is with sorrow and worry. Just as a thermometer shows just how warm it is or how cold it is, so the eyes show our feelings. So when Bobby Coon sat down and gazed toward the green forest and wished that he could tell Farmer Brown's boy how he wanted to go back there, a look of longing grew and grew in Bobby's eyes, and Farmer Brown's boy saw it. What is more, he understood it. His own eyes grew soft. You poor little rascal, said he. I believe you think you are a prisoner and that you want to go home. Well, I guess there is no reason why you shouldn't now. I'm very fond of you, Bobby. Yes, I am. I'm so fond of you that I hate to have you go, and I guess that I'm keeping you longer than was necessary. That leg of yours looked to me as good as ever, so I really haven't an excuse for keeping you any longer. I think we'll take a walk this afternoon. If Bobby could have understood what Farmer Brown's boy was saying, it would have made him feel a great deal better. But he didn't understand, and so he continued to stare toward the green forest and grow more and more homesick. After dinner, Farmer Brown's boy came out and took off the collar and chain and picked Bobby up in his arms. This time, Bobby didn't have his eyes covered as he did when he had been brought from the green forest. Fear no longer made him want to bite and scratch. Through the old orchard, straight to the green forest they went, and Bobby began to grow excited. What was going to happen? What did it mean? Through the great forest, straight to the place where Bobby's great hollow tree used to stand, went Farmer Brown's boy. When they got there, he smoothed Bobby's coat and patted him gently. Then he put him down on the ground. Here we are, Bobby said he. Now run along and find a new house and be happy. I hope you won't forget me because I am going to come over often to see you. Just keep out of mischief and above all keep out of the way of hunters next fall. They shall not hunt here if I can help it, but you know I cannot watch all the time. Goodbye, Bobby, and take care of yourself. Bobby didn't say goodbye because he didn't know how. But a great joy came into his eyes, and Farmer Brown's boy saw it and understood. Straight off among the trees Bobby walked. Once he looked back. Farmer Brown's boy was watching him and waved a hand. He was good to me. He certainly was good to me, thought Bobby. I, I believe I really am fond of him. Then he went on to look for a new house. All the joy of the springtime was in his heart. He was free. He was home once more in the green forest. He no longer feared Farmer Brown's boy. I'm the happiest coon in all the world, cried Bobby. End of section four.